<laughs> okay, so this demo is about um, swapping out the sky on your landscape. So first of all, this is my final piece, um, but I'm going to go all the way back to open and show you how I did it. All right. So first of all, I get your picture. Um, you're going to need to go to, um, you know what, I got to make sure I'm sharing the right screen. Um, you're going to need to go to a website to download a large picture. So um, when I say large, I mean large resolution. Um, and if you start Googling things, you can kind of find large resolution images there if you're really careful, but not really. It's not really as easy as you think. If you start Googling images, um, you will very quickly find images that you like that you can't use. And it's really, really frustrating. So maybe don't do it. Um, I've put two, um, I put two websites in here that have free large images. This one's called Pexels. And then there's another one that's in, in the slides as well that has large images. So um, what I do is make sure this says high resolution under photos and, you know, just start putting in search terms. So I put in like, I don't know, Galaxy or, hang on. It needs to say high resolution, my bad. Outer space, something like that, you know, try different search terms, atomic bomb, whatever, bananas. Um, and, you know, you find a bunch of pictures. Now, you have one constraint for sure, though, in that if you have a horizontal image like I do, um, you're going to need to find a horizontal picture to put in the sky. You can, here's a vertical one. It's like you could use this one, but then you're going to have to make sure it looks okay flipped. Um, if it's a vertical, you'll have to flip it before you can put it in your image. And you can see you just push download, and then up here is where they come up, put it on your desktop, et cetera, right? Okay, so once you got a large resolution image downloaded that you want to use for your sky, then you go ahead, open the original landscape picture here in Photo P, and then this, you know, you kind of hate this, but here we go, ready? All right, so what I want to do is I want to remove the sky from this thing. And even though in your mind you're thinking, oh, so I'm going to cut the sky. What's weird is you're actually going to select the ground, not the sky. Because we're going to select the ground, we're going to keep it. All right, so you're going to go up here to this third tool that has the magical selection tools, okay? I'm going to use quick selection for this. Now, when you go to it, it's going to be pretty small. You always change it up here. I'm going to make it a little bigger um, to try to get it to select more. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down, not to the sky, but to the ground. And I'm going to click the ground. Now, you might see them, you might not see them, but there's all these little ants, we call them, the little, you know, whatever. This line right here, these little fuzzy little white and black dots, that is the selection that it's made. It's actually a pretty good one for a start. Um, so I know you think you're done, but you're not. So here's another thing. Oops, sorry. My keyboard is very sensitive. Um, the real, what would, they, what would they say? Devil is in the details, all right? Um, right here, this tree, I mean, you could live without it, but it'll add an element of realism. So what I'm going to do is use that same selection tool right here, the uh, quick selection, and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And up here where it says plus or minus, I want to add that to my ground. So I'm going to push add. And you can see it sort of selects it. Um, there's a little blob right here that it shouldn't have. I click on the negative. I go over here and I can remove that little blob. Okay. Now, even though it looks pretty good, down here in these areas, you can see, um, if you look closely, that, you know, you got some chimneys missing. Um and whatnot. And even though that doesn't seem like a big deal, it'll end up, there are some things in here that are going to end up being a big deal when you actually try to put a new sky behind it. All of a sudden, all the flaws are going to show like big time. So the next step to this is the thing that students hate the most of all things, patience. Now, here we go. We're going to go up here to select and we're going to go to something called refine edge. 
Now, if you are using a Chromebook, right now is the time that you're going to hate your computer more than anything, because this is a very big operation. It's an operation where there's a lot of memory involved. There's a lot of processing involved and your computer is not going to like it um, at all. Your Chromebook is not going to like it. So even for me, I'm using like a really nice Mac and it's taking forever, which actually, if it takes much longer, I'm going to have to quit this video and start it over again. It says it's too long. Yep. Well, I guess I could put this video with another video. I'm going to pause it and then give it some time. Okay. Pause record. All right, cool. So I'm back. I had to like close it and reopen it. Um, so you can see it's that's just the way it's going to be sometimes. All right. So anyways, I'm going to zoom in a little. Well, maybe a lot. And I want you to just for a moment, think about the edge of this building. If you look at the screen on the left, um, it has this grayish like haze on it. And if you look at the screen on the right, it shows this check pattern. That check pattern is indicates clear meaning that is clear and anything you put underneath it is going to show right through like another sky, okay? So I'm going to go over here on this side and even though it looks good, trust me, it's not right. Um, there's a couple of things that are wrong. Um, first of all, get used to this. White, gray, and black. White will help you add something to your selection. Black will take it out and gray is the best tool of all. It's your tree tool, okay? It's for trees. It's for fuzzy animals, stuff like that. It will make that edge fuzzy and blendy just the way you need it to be. So I'm going to turn the size of this tool way, you know, so it's the size I want. I can see right here, this part, it looks all right, but I am missing the top of the house. Um, so I'm going to push on the white and I'm going to go across this house like this. And you will see it appear on the other side right here, right there. Um, the tool itself is round, which is useful, except for when you're doing straight lines, it's kind of, it's, you know, maybe a little annoying. So sometimes I have to go back over and do it again, but that added the top of that house, right? Now this, the tree right here, this part right here, this white in between the tree leaves is going to look way stupid when you put another sky in here, all of a sudden you're going to see that something's wrong with it. So I'm going to go to the gray. That's the blendy tool. I'm gonna go all around here. And the gray will basically make this tree look more realistic whenever the time comes. Um, you can kind of see it sort of has some holes in it now, like it should. All right, um, this little hand helps you to move it around. Um, and even though, like I said, you can't see it now, all the trees, everything fuzzy like this, you should go along the edge of it with this gray. Um, when the time comes, you will thank me. It, um, what was I going to say? It can be time consuming, but you can't go back. You can't fix it. it once it's gone, it's gone. Now I'm going to get super picky with this and I'm going to bring back these little, I don't know what you call Chimneys, chimneys, they're called chimneys. And this whole stripe right here, I'm going to bring that back. Um, but these little chimneys, I'm going to use the gray tool on them as well because they're so tiny. Um, I will never be able to cut them out properly. And if I use the gray, it'll at least be kind of blendy instead of stupid. Um, okay, now I'm going to go hit this chimney over here because... You can see it's like got a hole in it right here. That looks stupid. So um, I'm going to go back in the white. I'm going to put white right here, which by the way is not white. It just to add. Um, already looking much better. Okay, I'm going to go up to the hand. You can see I just move on down the building. All that looks pretty realistic. But there is this like one chimney thing right here. Sometimes I'll use the white first and then the gray to blend it. But in this case, I'm just using the gray. Um, it looks like they're detached from each other. So I'm going with the white to add that little part back so that it's actually sitting on the roof. 
Um, I feel like this looks a little awkward right here. I mean, really, you got to zoom in to see this stuff. Smoothing out that one. Okay, going over. And then we got a tree, obviously. Two little trees. I got this guy here. And then I've got this tree, which is pretty prominent and will look really, really awkward if we don't run the tool over it. So first, I usually run the tool, the gray tool around the edges. And then I actually go into the tree because we want some light to show through the tree because the tree has little holes in it and stuff, right? Um, if it goes too far, like if there's too much removed, you know, you can always go back in with the white, put it back in, and use the gray to touch it up on the edges. Um, and then I'm going to use my movie tool, and I think it looks pretty amazing. And, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Up here where it says new layer, I'm going to change that to selection. I'm going to push OK. Now, this is crucial. Don't touch the wrong button. If you lose the selection, you're going to hate yourself. You can go to select, um, save selection, especially if you aren't going to get it done. Um, uh, because when you open Photoshop again, when you open up this file in Photoshop again, it's not going to be there unless you specifically save the selection. Also, if you at this point need to go, like it's the end of class, you'll need to go to file save as PSD, not JPEG. Because JPEG will throw away all your work. Save as PSD and make sure you've saved the selection you made. All right. Anyways, moving forward. I got this selection. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go um, command C. On yours, that'll be control C, which is it's that's copy, you know, and then I'm going to go up here to layer and go layer, new layer. That'll make an empty layer. And then I'm going to go command B and it's going to put it on that empty layer. Now, if I turn off the eyeball, look, see, now I've got my perfectly cut out ground. Okay. So then I'm going to go like this file when in place. And if you'll remember, I had that sky cut out earlier. I mean, downloaded. I'm going to push open and place, open and place. And then first of all, first of all, make sure you use the corners so it's not getting all mutated and stretch that thing out so it covers a whole picture. And then you're going to um, push return or enter or whatever. You're going to put the ground layer on top of it over here. And ba-boom. Now we have a night sky. Now see... Not as perfect as my other one, but I'm going to let it go. But right here, see this? Oh, boy, is that driving me crazy. That right here is what happens when you um, don't notice that something's wrong. See? That right there, I do not like that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So me being me, me being picky, I'm going to go um, to this layer where that sky is. I'm going to use that clone tool like we used on the last project. And, oops, that's too big. I'm going to try to kind of fix that up because I don't like that at all. Not at all. Oh, turn it. It's not letting me do it. Now I'm back. All right. You know what? There's only one way to do it now to fix that. I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to have to merge all these layers. Okay. Now, you might not have to do this, but you might. So I'm going to go to layer, um, da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, flatten. Once you flatten, all the layers become one. And then it'll let me deposit whatever I want over here. Okay. So option, click, deposit. I mean, it's not going to be perfect because... Perfect would have been me doing it right in the first place, like I did on the other one. Um, but anyways, if you find yourself in that position and there's just like some stupid little thing that's bothering you, there are things we can do about it. And that is one of them. Um, just let me know if you need help with that. And, you know, I'll help you. So there we go. Now we have. This is Mount Airy, my neighborhood with. The galaxy so when it's all done all done all done you go to file 
export as JPEG, and you're going to turn that in to your assignment. Okay, in that sense.